It is that time once again. It is time for the Copa del Rey Juvenil edition. It is the round of 16, or the quarts de final, as we like to say over here. We welcome you to the Ciudad Esportiva, Joan Gamper. And this matchup in the round of 16 of the Copa between Barca and Malaga. Now we're excited for this one. Barca coming off of a victory in the round of 32. Spencer Siegel here with you on the English side of things as we get ready for action. Barca trying to make it a second consecutive victory in the Copa and continue their magnificent season in all competitions with just one loss so far. Lamine Yamal indeed is a part of the starting 11. So too is Angel Alarcón, who made his first team debut not too long ago. Tony Caravaca will be mulling around in the midfield. Gerard Hernández as well. Arnau Casas will duel with Sergi Dominguez as the two central backs. It is a, a stacked squad, and the lockout for these two teams takes place now. As far as Malaga goes, there are a couple of players that are worth keeping your eye on. It starts with Alejandro Contreras, the number 10, who has scored eight goals this season. He is one of those who will be perhaps the most watched player in blue and white with his efforts so far this season. The full 11 for Malaga, we'll get through them in just a little bit, but happy to have this game at home, ready for an exciting day where the winner will move on to the quarterfinals of this competition. Copa del Rey Juvenil, which goes on today. And as it will be, all matchups in the round of 16 will take place today. Uh, one of them already in the books, though we wait on the result for that one. But Barca are trying to get back to a place where they have been before but it's been quite a while since the Copa del Rey Juvenil was captured by this squad. Got to go back to 2011 when it happened. They still, however, have won this competition more times than any other club in the history of it. It's happened five times since the turn of the century. We hope for Barca that this is the continuation of another run in this competition. Team who has not lost a game since October and who have won three in a row in the league without conceding. In fact, the run that this team is on in the league, they have now played five consecutive games. That is 450 minutes of football without a concession. And so let's see what this team can bring against a Malaga side who play in a very difficult group in terms of the Divisio Honor Juvenil. The whistle of Sergi Carrero Romera gets us underway. Happy to have you on Barca TV Plus. Right away, it's Alarcón on the chase and winning his side a throw. team from Malaga is made up of predominantly Spanish players. We'll work through what they've been able to accomplish so far. 
11 for them consists of Andres in goal, Plaza, Samu, Omar, Benito, Ethan Merino, the captain Calvo, De La Lama, Ruben, Contreras and Rafita. And here comes Malaga on the run right away with Rafita on the near side, who drops it back for De La Lama. Brought into the middle, and it's sent away to safety by Xavi Moreno. The speed of this game will pick up, and if Barca are not careful, Malaga can get on the run quickly. Here comes a shot that is high and wide of its target. Ethan Merino was ready for it. But let's just talk for a moment about the difference between the two teams and the divisions that they play in. If you take group three of the Divisio Honor Juvenil and you run through teams that are in the top flight, or we'll even call it, we'll go so far as to say the top two flights of Spanish football. Hold that thought because Barca are on the run. And this is a wonderful run made by Angel Alarcón who slows up his run and then couldn't get the shot away. It's stuck under his feet for just a moment, but it's back with Hector Fort. And Barca will set up for the first time in their attacking half. This is Unai. Dominguez wanting to go quickly over the top. That's a great ball for Lamine, but uh, he was offside. So 16 teams in group three, right? Barca, one of the teams in the top two flights, of course. Zaragoza, who sits second in the table. Mallorca, Espanyol, Huesca, and Girona. That is six teams who occupy six of the top 10 spots in the league. The only six out of the 16 in either of the top two divisions in Barca's group, which is essentially Catalonia with a little bit of leeway. Now take that sentiment and we go over to another area. And Malaga have just as difficult of a job. Of course, their senior squad are in the second tier as well and we'll get on to that in just a little bit because they're having a tough time this year but it's Almeria, Betis, Sevilla, Malaga, Cadiz, Granada, that's six teams as well. The difference though is that the top flight teams occupy seven of the top, uh, rather six of the top seven spots. And what that tells you is that the competition between those top teams is much tighter. And that Barca do have a difficult task in front of them today if they are to advance. will be reset by Arnel back to under Astralaga. <laughs> the Copa is the best mid-season litmus test for your squad. Because it's a little bit harder to give yourself the same level of competition on a consistent basis in the leagues that these teams play in. Free kick to be taken by Samu. Samu. <laughs> 
Sent in to the far side, headed away. And brought back to the top where Ander is able to collect the shot. Good recovery from Calvo. Which in Spanish means bald, and he's the one on the ball now, or just was. He's been fouled, and there might be a card coming out here. Let's see, that is perhaps the one warning. Dani Rodriguez, who has not yet gotten on the ball. Brought Calvo to his feet with a late lunge. But yeah, bald, uh, he is not. Let's see if Barca can start to settle on some possession. That's done well by Caravaca, who sends it to Unai Hernandez and now on the far side, Danny Rodriguez is taken down right on the edge of the box. He's asking for a foul. He has not been given. Barca will try it again. Through the lines for Unai, who needs to find another pass. Was looking for Alarcón. It's a handball, and that was picked up by Ruben after the ball was already placed down. That's, that's not quite allowable. One thing that these types of games also bring us is that elimination atmosphere and what it does is it forces both teams and both sets of players to test themselves in terms of what they can achieve and what kind of tactics and little strategy points within the game that they can get after. That to say, you don't typically see a lot of extracurricular time-wasting tactics or pickups of the ball. I mean, it happens, of course, in every game. That's just part of the sport. But here especially. Side led by Oscar Lopez. A, who are currently first in the table in Group 3 in the Divisio Honor Juvenil. They've got a five-point cushion on Zaragoza. Just the one loss on the season through 17 games. They are just over the halfway point of the season. Now here comes Calvo, who tries to send it into the middle, and it's just, just beyond the reach. Barca have no choice, really, but to see the ball out. Rafita stabbed for it, but could not get to it. Angel did well. Caravaca could not hold it up as it's won back by Contreras. Vamos, 
Meanwhile, in Malaga's group four, they currently sit fourth. To tie atop the table after 19 games between Betis and Almeria. Here is Dani's cross looking for Alarcón, not there. Now has to apply the pressure to Contreras, who gets it away, off to Plaza. With Malaga in fourth place, 36 points, 12 points back of the two-way tie for first. Five points back of third place Sevilla, and two points up on fifth place Cali. Lamine, for the first time, we see him on the ball with an extended run, looking to make a move, trying to get it inside to Unai, who applies the pressure and wins it back beautifully. Now what can he do with it? It's still Unai Hernandez taken down. One back by Barca again, top of the box bound, past Alarcón. It didn't reach Lamine. You, hear, you heard the sin falta without fouling. Don't foul, don't foul. And unfortunately, you wonder, was this a foul? Probably not. Barca winning it back right away though, provided them a good opportunity. Off by Dominguez. Sergi Dominguez flings it to Gerard Hernandez. And Lamine for Fort. Hernandez again. Here is Lamine Yamal to his right. Good cross in, which is right at Andres. And he covers it up. Barca's round of 32 victory came against Dam. It was a convincing victory in the end. In the first round of the Copa del Rey, 32 teams get their chance. Here come Barca again. Double slide in and Unai couldn't get to it. Calvo comes away with it. Lamine to the middle. A through ball for Angel Alarcón. And he puts it wide. A brilliant chance for Angel to score. A beautiful pass from Lamine Yamal. And the chances wasted in the end. Barca aren't going to get too many opportunities as good as that one. Here is Xavi Moreno surging forward. Now Dani to the middle. Caravaca asking for it, trying to turn, which he does. Lamine Yamal in space. Yamal to his right, trying to put it across. 
And it's popped up and caught by Andres. Well, the round of 32 did provide us with a couple of upsets. Zaragoza, who as mentioned, are in second place in the table in Barça's group three. They suffered a 2-0 defeat at home to Deportivo Alaves. They stayed in for fourth. Who gets the early cross in, back post bound. And it's a foul against Dani. Also saw Real Sociedad lose at home to Antiguoco. And then who doesn't love a Seville derby between Betis and Sevilla in the round of 32, a 1-0 victory for Betis. It is worth noting that only one team who has advanced to the round of 16 did not score in their opening round matchup. The only game that went to penalties, it was Malaga defeating Cadiz on the road. Nil-nil the score line two weeks ago. It went to penalties. Malaga with a 4-3 penalty shootout victory to advance and play here. Fourth has space, a heavy touch though, and he somehow got it back. Dropping in is Hernandez. Wide is Lamine. With the space. Choosing the middle again. Back for Lamine. It's a patient approach that the head coach from Malaga approves of. Luis Bueno. Barca are not lacking in the search. They just need to find the pot of gold at the end of this rainbow. They are definitely probing, though. And now Casas ahead for Lamine. Oh, that's a nice move. And he's still going, Lamine Yamal. You know he wants to make something of it. Tried to chip it up to the back post. Alarcón heads it home. It was all started from Lenin Yamal, and the flag has come up late. The ruling is offside, so when did this ball pop up in the air is the question. Yeah, he, he is offside, that is a good call. When Lamine put that ball on the ground, Angel Alarcón was in an offside position. Watch when Lamine gets rid of it, where number nine is, ahead of the screen, right? Here, yep, that's an offside. It's the right call, it's unfortunate. But we stay nil-nil. And no, there is no VAR in this case, not that it would matter at this stage. This is just good old fashioned Spanish football at its best. A 
away by Sergi. Back for Samu. Amin trying to track him down. Samu does well to get around him. A whistle against Dunny, who doth protest. But it's definitely a foul. Halfway through this first half, Barca have put the ball in the back of the net. They do not have the goal to show for it, unfortunately. But they will surely take the momentum with them through the rest of this half. Now this is Malaga trying to get on the ball for the first time in a while. They cannot seem to do that. Fourth with a heavy touch, manages to keep his run going, but it's plucked off his feet by Samu. Kept alive for a Barca throw. Enough by Hernandez that time. It's a brilliant little link up play for De La Lama. Here is Ethan Merino. Plaza boots it forward. Sergi Dominguez is fouled on his way to collecting that. The eight round of 16 matchups in the Copa do Rey Juvenil. Features teams from the top two flights for the most part. Betis and Las Palmas will meet. Real Madrid and Valencia. Deportivo and Atletico. So I have Atletic and Alcorcón. Tenerife via Real. There's another claim of a foul, but it will be a corner instead. Plenty of bodies sifting forward this time for Barca. First corner of the day. Sent into the near post. Alarcón got a little flick to it. It came all the way through. Did it touch anybody? Might have been pushed away by Andres. Will be another corner. So Unai will trot from one side to the other and prepares to take this one. Skimming ball in low, did not do enough. One back though by Sergi who 
Took too long on the ball, but it's given away to Unai, who can now get his cross in. Plenty of bodies in the box. There's a man at the back, and fourth fell. And now Malaga looked to break. That's also well defended by Moreno, who didn't have a shout from behind. Nobody seemed to tell him that he was being closed down, and Contreras is dispossessed, and this game is starting to open up very nicely. I'm not sure what the Malaga fans are doing other than outpouring their emotions. That was a foul. They don't have the benefit of the replay. They don't have the patience for the replay. <laughs> Long ball from Casas runs all the way through. And there just doesn't seem to be much of an inroad at this point. Now Malaga on the run. Cut out by Moreno. Held up by Dani, who is fouled. Yeah, it's a little more of the uh, head games coming on. Calvo getting some pushing and shoving in. Barça deciding to go through the lines. That's a nice pass through as well. Trying to track it down, Hernández couldn't get there. It's picked up by De La Lama. Contreras, got to be careful with him and his through ball looking for Calvo wasn't quite calibrated enough. Samu over the top, but he didn't really have anybody in mind. It ends up working for them. But Contreras is moving too quickly, and with the ball, Malaga don't seem to have much of a plan right now. So we are nil-nil, half an hour in, in this round of 16 matchup in the Copa del Rey. Worth noting that the senior club is struggling right now in a serious way in the Segunda. We'll get to that in a second. We'll see if this side can muster up anything inside the box. They haven't been able to do it yet. Rafita couldn't get away from Fort. Lamine always in control. And he looks to release Alarcón, which he almost did. Hey. 
in the 22-team Segunda Division, where three teams go up to La Liga and four teams get relegated to the third tier. Malaga sit 20th out of 22. They are four points back of safety. They are just over the halfway mark of the season. And they are really going to have to fight to avoid the drop this season based on their passage of play. A team with a very rich history, but only a recent rich history. In fact, Malaga, the club, had never before been in either of the top two tiers of Spanish football until 1998. They were hovering around in the third or fourth tier ever since the inception of their club in 1948. Back then known as Club Atlético Malagueño. They rose to prominence quickly. 1998, they spent one season in the second tier and they were promoted right away. Up to La Liga they went, and from 1999 to 2018, a near 20 year run, they spent all but two seasons in the top flight. They went to the Champions League at one point after finishing fourth in 2012. And then this decline which has hit could see them fall out of the top two flights altogether. Relegated in 2018. This is their fifth consecutive season in the Segunda. They finished 18th last year, which was just enough to see them survive another year. 18th was the first position of safety. Two points above the relegation zone. Here is Lamine. Fourth, low skimming cross is caught by Andres. No whistle and numbers for Barca. So Unai decides to pull it up. Spinning through trouble, finding the feet of Lamine Yamal again. The claim is for a handball, and Lamine puts his hands in the air and says, It happened, it was there, I saw it. It's just a throw. Couldn't get back to him, though. thing is, the way the new setup works for the pyramid here in Spain, it is a lot easier if you are not alert to fall down the ladder than it is to go up quickly. Now that said, it's, it's not easy to go up anywhere. But relative to how difficult it is to go up, dropping has become something that's very possible based on the reshuffling of the deck and how they're doing this. You, you 
obviously finishing the bottom three in the Liga and you go down. But now, you know, you've got four spots in the Segunda at the bottom as Xavi Moreno is the player down for Barca. He's going to need a moment. But the 19, 20, 21, 22 spots, you go down. Let's take a look at where Moreno went down. He took a lunge to the arm from, or a lunge to the head from the arm of Calvo. Back to his feet, though. Then, of course, you have all kinds of players going, coming, deciding to depart for one reason or another when you change leagues from the second to the third or the first to the second or what have you. And if you go down to the third tier now, getting back up to the Segunda is not as easy as finishing in the top four because there are two groups of 20, which means of the 40 teams, only four get to go up. And you have to either win the league or you have to go through a playoff and win that. And then even then, if you're really not having a good go of it, the bottom five teams of each side of 20 go down. So I'm not saying that it's going to happen, but Malaga were in the top flight in 2018. It's not out of the realm of possibility that if they continue to fall from grace, you're not careful. You find yourself in the fourth division before you can even blink. In theory, these juvenil players will hopefully have something to say about that once they get their opportunities. They could use some reinforcement. Bad clearance from Plaza. Barca will have a throw. Haven't been able to generate a chance since the goal that was disallowed for the, for the offside. Another foul, this time it's a card. This card will go against Plaza. It was one too many. Free kick comes in. There weren't enough bodies in the area. Did it stay in? It's headed away by De La Lama. It will only be a throw for Barca. Five more minutes to elapse in this first half. Hernandez wins Barca a corner. I beg your pardon, that was uh, Tony Caravaca. It is Unai Hernandez. Didn't get past the first man, but it wasn't cleared convincingly, so Barca will try again. Yeah. 
This one needs to get a little bit further up, which it does. Back out to Unai. Casas got the cross in, but didn't have anybody to aim at. And that's Barca's problem right now. There's nobody at the other end of these. And a foul as Plaza plowed into a Barca player. what happens when you're slightly smaller than the rest and you go up like that as you challenge you are subject to being rocked a little bit further and now it looks like Luis Bueno is going to have a quick talking to Another crunching challenge, but Barca have it back, and Dani is right back to his feet. What Barca are looking for is a little bit more order. Some consistency. Flag is up on Malaga. Casas over the top. Settled down by Moreno. Into the middle. Popped up by Dani. Recovered by Hector, who tried to chop it back into Caravaca's path. Barca will have a throw. And we've got about a minute or so left before the halftime whistle. Or any added time that does come about, maybe a minute. But it appears as if Malaga are very content at this point, keeping a zero on the score sheet on one side and worrying about their score line later. Lamine wiggles through defenders. Keeps his run going, and a yellow card will come out for Ruben, and that was a no-brainer. I mean, what are we doing? On, on what planet is that acceptable? That's two yellow cards now for Malaga. in all the way through and picked up by Andres and the yellow card is going to come out this time for Tony Caravaca and it was a, a sort of a baited yellow card because Andres was waiting for it and 
Ah, uh, well, I, he slid in, but I, I don't know if he really made any contact. Thing is, the two yellow cars that Malaga have picked up, very clear and obvious yellows. That one, I wouldn't call it as clear. Maybe time for one more surge from either side. It will be Rafita who chips it over the top, headed to safety only as far as Rafita again, who goes down right on the edge of the box, asking for a penalty, which he will not receive. And that'll do it for half number one. Let's take another look. There was a clip, and there is certainly a case that can be made. However, for now, we will play 45 more minutes to decide a winner because so far we can't get any closer to one. Nil-nil at halftime in the round of 16 in the Copa del Rey Juvenil Barça and Malaga with the second half coming your way on the other side. So as we get ready to start the second half between Barça and Malaga here at the Ciudad Esportiva, Joan Gamper, the two sides coming out of the halftime locker rooms. Barça looking like they were the more likely side to score in the first half, but that's what happens in these single elimination ties. You never quite know exactly how it can end because all it takes is one. And this is a Barca team that have fought through a lot this year. This is a team who have gotten to the point where they've accomplished just about everything in the last year that they've wanted to with one exception they, they didn't capture the Copa last year they went out in the first round Looks like we might have a change on the horizon as well, maybe even two of them. Indeed, we do see Tony Caravaca who was in the book. He's going to come out. Hector Fort is going to come out as well. Enter Joan Anaya and Cristobal Munoz. And those are the two changes on the Barca side, we did see a graphic come up. I believe it is Fran who is entering for Plaza. As far as I can tell, that was the only Malaga change that we had. But if there are more, we will locate it and get it back to you. So for Barca, it will be Ander Astralaga in goal, Joan Anaya along with Cristobal Munoz off the bench. Arnau Casas, Sergi Dominguez, Xavi Moreno, Gerard Hernández, Lamin Yamal, Ángel Alarcón, Unai Hernández, and Dani Rodríguez. And right away, there's a chance for Ángel, but he's offside. 
So it hits the back of the net again for Alarcon, but he is now 0 for 2 in that department. Rippled the net that time. Already a good start for Barca, but the effort comes this time from Contreras. So we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, eight goals this season. And he provided a brief scare for just a moment there. Here is the man who was the most active in the first half, Calvo, who gets a good cross in. Now it's Contreras, back across, has won the first corner for Malaga today. And there is a renewed sense of energy for them. Comes back through to Calvo, who was offside when he got the return. So Barca can breathe easy, although it was a, a decently worked set piece from the corner. Now is uh, probably a good time as we've got this, this little lull in the action to give a quick shout out to our man Arson, who made the trip to Barcelona over the last week or so, went to the Getafe game, but more importantly, went uh, around the area. We always see Arsen on Twitter, Arsen KVEFCB. And here is Angel Alarcón, who has gotten around the keeper, and I believe there's going to be a card that comes out. The question is what color? It's yellow. Alarcón was headed wide. And it's going to bring the card out for Andres. Sets up a free kick just on the outside of the box. That's two very quick, rapid fire responses from Barca. And this is prime set-piece territory for this club. Unai Hernández has shown that he can hit them from here. There is only one man that appears to be lining up to smack this home. He can get it up, but can he bring it back down? Here is Unai Hernández into the wall, and it came all the way through. That was a nasty ricochet off of Omar and out for a corner. So Barca will set it up again. A 
to be taken by Gerard Hernandez. Alarcón was in the area, out by Calvo, and recycled all the way back through, all the way to Ander. Just want to finish the shout out for a moment. If you want highlights of this game, Twitter's got you. Arson KVE FCB, he's watching right now. I can guarantee you he's posting highlights of this match. Uh, came over here for the first time from Lithuania and brought us at Barca Studios a delicious Lithuanian dessert of which I unfortunately cannot give you the name of because I'm sorry, Arsen, I, I, I don't read Lithuanian. However, we had it in the office and uh, nobody seemed to be able to stop. I only got a couple of bites of it because everybody went after it and none of them even adhered to the to the uh, guidelines that this Lithuanian dessert should be eaten with tea. But, but I did, I held true to it. So thank you and uh, thank you for your work. Let's continue to enjoy this Copa del Rey Juvenil matchup, which in the second half now through the first six minutes has given us quite the wonderful array of opportunities as Lamine's pressure almost forced a mistake from Andres. Here we go again. Through the lines, Joan Anaya catching up to defend against Rafita. Back to the top as the cross comes in. Barca's defense has been stout. Back by Ethan Merino. Over the top for Fran. Space for Contreras, but Ander is there to run onto it. a misplaced inadvertent hand coming from Fran Here is Ruben, who loses out on possession. There's nowhere for Hernandez to go, so he just recycles it back. It's caught up again by Ethan Merino, and Malaga are much more comfortable on the ball in the second half. And Lamine, who is just dispossessed and not fouled in the process, has not been able to get on the ball at all. And here come Malaga again, although it's intercepted by Xavi Moreno. Anaya all the way back. Popped up by Ander. Rafita. Samu flicks it forward, although Arnau is there to deal with it, and he won't take any chances, although he did find John. He actually saw him before we did. John Hanaya now. Lamine comes back to help. Barca just making Malaga run. Oh, 
And we were talking about the Copa del Rey being tonight, the game against Sociedad. And it's interesting because you saw that Angel Alarcón was a player who got to make his first team debut in the last round of the Copa against Ceuta. Big moment for him, an exciting moment. It always is when young players make their first team debuts. And then we saw the team sheet for Barca's matchup against Sociedad and Alarcón was not a part of it. And with the departure of Memphis, with everything that's going on, here's Alarcón trying a strike and a follow-up by Muñoz. Finally, the whistle goes against Barca. A after everything that was going on at the striker position, you thought that maybe Ángel would get a second chance to be at least on the bench. But I wonder, and it's, it's just based on the way that the schedule lines up. You've got this Copa matchup, which Ángel was very likely to start in. So are you almost better off giving him the full start, maybe not 90 minutes, we'll see how long he goes tonight, but giving him the opportunity to play as a striker rather than just sitting on the bench for a Copa game. I mean, you know what he would choose. He'd want to be up with the first team, but this is his chance to make his mark, and he hasn't gotten much service, but he has put the ball in the back of the net twice, though it hasn't counted either time. A chase down for Rafita, he'll get to it. Anaya is watching him. One step over and Rafita puts it in. And menacingly so. Now a chance for Danny Rodriguez to stretch his legs. Had a frantic first five minutes and we've slowed back down to a pace that we've been more accustomed to in this type of Copa matchup. Just no entry passes for Barca, just no inroads. Now, oh no, oh my goodness, we've seen a red card for Lamine Yamal and we didn't even get a, see, a look at what happened. Lamine has been sent off and we're not even gonna get a replay. So if you're wondering what happened and why, The referee, Sergi Carrero, has sent off Lamine Yamal. There was a challenge in here, and we don't have a look at it. So Lamine is off, and that also means that should Barca advance, he will not be a part of proceedings in the quarterfinal. And Barca are down to 10 men.
So changes are coming. For the time being, it looks like they're coming for Malaga only. Tomas on the right, Usama on the left. Things just got a lot more complicated. And we've had a long stoppage too, which is going to add a couple of minutes at the very least on to whatever happens at the end of this 90. Let's see exactly how Malaga approaches having the extra man. Because Barca will now have to defend with one fewer. And they also won't have the luxury of Lamin Yamal in attack. What a big blow that is to the Blaugrana in this contest. Malaga will surely think about being the team on the prowl. And Barca won't have much time to sit on the ball and play their possession game. They're gonna have to think about going quicker. Chipped through by Tomas. Omar. Benito. Naya settles it down. And that's the side of the pitch where there isn't as much room to work with, but they'll certainly take the yellow for Merino. I mean, even with an extra man on the pitch, it feels like Malaga are playing for the draw to try and get them to penalties. So far, they really haven't been able to create. <laughs> Through the lines, maybe there's a chance for Barca, not that time from Cristo. Heavy pressure coming from Unai Hernández. Anaya stayed upright, wins it back. And Barca are going to try and do this from back to front. Anaya 
Looking for the sideline. That's well done. Barca turning around and moving backwards again. Sergi Dominguez through the lines. Nicely found. Munoz tried to go too quick. Thought he saw a pass that wasn't there. One back by Unai, though, and it sticks with Dani. Quick long ball over the top, Alarcón offside. He is playing right on the line today, as he normally does. And it just seems like he's getting a bad break on these releases. That was mightily close. Spread wide again, put in by Samu to the area dangerously, out by Xavi Moreno. Here's the follow-up shot from Fran, and it's skied high. That's the closest Malaga have been in a while, and that's a good look at it. That's one where you'd think you've got to at least test on the Rastalaga. Sun has begun to descend. We play in the shade. It also means it's going to get a little bit colder around these parts. That's just the way it tends to be around here this time of year. So actually, it's unseasonably cold so far. Uh, this time of the year, we are staring down the barrel of nine degrees, and that might dip by the end of this game as low as six or seven. We'll see. By that time, everybody will be nice and loose, though. Flicked forward by Fran for Calvo to chase. He won't get there. Anaya, nicely done. Parsa playing down a man after Lamine Yamal was sent off with a red card about 10 minutes ago. And they have not looked much different, Barca, from those 10 minutes that have elapsed. For better or worse, It's just worth repeating that this competition, which started one round ago, the round of 32, only one team that remains in this competition has not yet scored a goal. Forget about a goal in open play or whatever. Not a goal. Malaga went nil-nil with Cadiz. 1-4-3 on penalties.
And at present, it seems to be how they are content with flowing through this competition. Barca need to try to put a stop to that. There's a seeking ball through the lines that's really well done, but it'll send out Astralaga, who comes out on the pass from Contreras. Well won by Alarcón, and now he's making a run in, and he starts to cut inside. This could be the moment, but it's clipped off of his feet by Benito. A frustrated Angel Alarcón tried to get inside, and it just wasn't there for him. Barca trying to turn, Alarcón fouled, out comes a card. This one will be for De La Lama, and the cards are piling up for Malaga. They don't have many players left who don't have one. That's the sixth card, no, the fifth. The fifth yellow, and a dangerous challenge. Alarcón again, chipped over the top, that's a good ball, flicked on by Moreno. Alarcón taken away by Omar. Fran. Benito over the top. Fran on the follow-up, didn't get there in time. Alarcón is doing a little bit more to help out with hold-up play. And then he wants to go along the sideline, which he's done. That was really well done, and Barca win the throw from there. He basically took that thing directly over the white line. Look at this, that stays in almost, well, it stays in the whole time. It stays on the white line almost the whole time. We're not quite there yet. But we're getting closer to the point where if it's necessary, we'll start talking about what happens if it's nil-nil beyond these 90 minutes. Alarcón to his left, wiggling through defenders. It's still Ángel Alarcón. The cross comes in and Barca win a corner. <laughs> 
Now, should we get to the 90th minute and beyond and hear a final whistle and we haven't separated the sides, then we will go to extra time. We'll play another 30 minutes with a winner TBD. Here comes the corner for Barca to the back post, popped up in the air, won by Cristobal Munoz and headed on by Arnau. Only into the awaiting arms eventually of the keeper Andres after it went out of play. It would be extra time that would take us to minute 120 and if we still couldn't separate the sides, penalties. Barca are doing this all down a man. Down arguably one of their best. Here is Merino. Holy Cross comes in, and Nandez did enough. Here's the follow-up shot, and Nandez is called into action for the first time. He's up to the task. Calvo has looked really good today. A couple of step overs. Xavi gets it around one. And Barca have a throw from there. I'm sure there are some in the stands who are ready to do a double Copa Day because all you've got to do is travel the requisite 10 minutes by car from here to the Camp Nou, uh, or you could could catch a train, take you a little bit longer, but you'd be there. And like I said, one could argue that this is perhaps one of the best Copa do Rey quarterfinals that we are likely to see. This edition of the Copa in the quarterfinal round features what I would say are, are probably close to the eight best teams in the competition. Here comes the corner, popped away and booted out of harm's way for everybody to chase. And now Barca are on the run and maybe they can make this count. Dani Rodriguez, back post bound, and Munoz couldn't settle it down. Unai commits a foul, could not catch up to it. But in the Copa in the quarterfinals, you've got Barca, Sociedad, Osasuna, Sevilla, Valencia, Athletic Club. And then the Madrid derby with Real Madrid and Atletico de Madrid. Really all you're missing at this point is Betis and Villarreal and both of those teams were taken out by other top competition. Osasuna have had a great year as they beat Betis and then Real Madrid had to come back to beat Villarreal who had an early two goal lead. Cristo, 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 Cristo,
There's an opportunity in the box for Malaga. Now the flick is on and the ball hits the back of the net. No, it goes in behind, doesn't it? I'm sorry, our camera angle was off on that one. It looked like Contreras had put it in the right spot and, and that is absolutely over and behind. <laughs> I beg your pardon, truly. It looked like Malaga had taken the lead. In fact, it is still nil-nil. One that they should have scored. Tomas was the one who got his head to it. And now here come the final substitutions of the 90 minutes for Malaga. Hector and Tome. Here comes Anaya, moving quickly to the feet of Alarcón, trying to do something spectacular, and it's a lazy fly ball for Andres to handle. Fran again. Benito. Another effort coming in, cleared away. We're starting to wind down on the 90 minutes and it doesn't really feel like anything's going to change unless you get one moment of magic and one might be all it takes. Otherwise, we're going to play on and see these two sides get at it for another 30 minutes, but it almost feels like going directly to penalties is perhaps the more efficient route. Usama. Hector. Far side. Franz Cross under on the catch. Here comes Alarcón around the defense once again, trying to cut inside. He stays on his feet. Alarcón's cross. Cristo there needs to make a turn, drops it off. Anaya's shot skied. And you can see Unai Hernández with his hands lumped below his head, asking, please, I needed the ball right there. Please. Begging for an opportunity. Yeah. 
Munoz keeps it alive. Again, Unai is calling for the ball and it doesn't go to him. This time it's Alarcón again. Ángel Alar Alarcón's shot is blocked. Out by Héctor. Barca have a renewed sense of confidence on the ball, albeit down a man. With just a few minutes remaining before a potential set of extra time. Hector should be seeing a card, which he will. That is card number six for Malaga tonight. the middle from Alarcón. Unai on the return. Alarcón has stayed onside? No. Flag is up on him again and Kamavo knew it right away. We have hit minute 90. And we are still waiting for a breakthrough. And if it comes now, it will be the most dramatic style. If they want to advance in the Copa del Rey Juvenil, they have to break through and they have to do it down a man. This is the beginning of an ultimate test for them. Looked like there was a foul there against Xavi Moreno and in the end it won't go down as anything. Moreno was shunned to the ground by Fran, who was not a part of the play. How much extra time is there to be? We won't know. Officially, we'll just have to wait and keep our eyes at around the uh, the minute marks for, with the referee. But we did have the Lamine red card, which took a few minutes to sort out. So I'm guessing at least three, maybe even four or five. Played by Fran. One back by Xavi Alarcón. Xavi trying to get around one. Defends very well, Xavi Moreno. Unai spinning away, gluing the ball to his feet, and he should have a corner. He does.
Really well done by Unai Hernandez, who in all likelihood has been frustrated today because he hasn't been able to get on the ball the way that he wants to, especially since Lamine was sent off. So this could be the game changer here. It looks like it'll be Gerard Hernandez to take. No doubt would win it for Barca here at the end. Sent in dangerously. Headed clear. Barca have to be careful of a counter. In fact, it's won back by Unai again. Barca have a throw. Moreno to the middle. Dani pressuring. Hector facilitating. Now here comes an effort into the box for Malaga. That could win it for them too. And Ander is down to all fours to make sure he grabs that comfortably. And that is the final whistle of the 90 minutes, which means we are not done yet at the Ciudad Esportiva. It's job done for the first 90 for Barca. And now they're going to have another half of an hour without Lamine Yamal down to 10 men where they'll have to continue their ways. Nil, nil in the round of 16 in the Copa del Rey Juvenil with extra time coming up right after this. So this was for Barca what looked to be two opportunities for them. They had their chances in both the first and second halves. And Barca were also on the back foot occasionally with Malaga coming forward, especially after the red card, which we never got a good look at. We never really got to see it. All of our eyes were on another portion of the pitch and Something happened with Lamine Yamal. And that something was enough to force the referee, Sergi Carrero Romera, to take his red card out, show it to Lamine, and that was that. A couple of chances for Barca came after the foul on Alarcón. This is where the red card came in. Lamine was taken down. Again, the picture is not quite clear. And Lamine is sent off. This was a chance for Fran. There were not many chances from either side to say the least. This was another effort with Angel Alarcón who tried to cut it back inside. It was just defended well enough by Benito. So there is a spot in the quarterfinals of this competition on the line, but only one of these teams will make that happen. And it's incredible that we have played 90 minutes tonight of scoreless football. And recall that Malaga's victory in the most recent round also came with penalties and a nil-nil. So Malaga have played to this point 210 minutes 
without a goal for either side in this competition. And it is fairly similar to the way that they play in group four in the Divisio Honor Juvenil. They don't give up a lot of goals. They've played 19 games. They've conceded 18 goals in that competition. They've only scored 29, but they do have 11 wins. So it checks out. It makes sense. But now, can you make your way into the next round of the Copa with that method? Angel Alarcón will continue to try and make it happen. He's getting an extra run today as well. And the second portion of this extra time is coming up. So we've got to find a winner and we will have two 15 minute periods to make it happen. Barca are down a man because of the red card shown to Lamine Yamal. On a day for Malaga fans who are trying to find something positive to grasp from what is going on in the world of their club. In fact, right when this game started, just before it started, Malaga announced that Sergio Pellicer would be named the head coach, the manager for Malaga, once again. He led the team for a brief stretch for a year and a half. From January 2020 to May of 21, he is now starting today. The new man in charge, the new man in charge trying to get them out of the relegation zone in the segunda. And now this team that features Luis Bueno as their head man have been executing fairly well to their game plan. They've played a lot more of their game than Barca have played theirs. Now one goal will very likely make the difference. Here is Samu. Taken away by Munoz. Now Dani wins the throw. Same can be said about Barca and their defensive structure as well. Mentioned at the top of the broadcast that they have not given up a goal in league play since November. Five consecutive games without concession. Four wins, one nil-nil. The only goal they've allowed since November was in the Copa del Rey two weeks ago against Dam, a game that they won 4-1. But the five straight clean sheets is a testament to what they've been trying to do. They didn't have two consecutive clean sheets in the first 12 games of the season. And they still managed to get by without too many problems. And they're still, of course, top of the league. But their defense has turned into their calling card. Hector. Hector. 
Wide for Tome, who brings it back infield. Calvo chops it back into Tome's path, who pokes it forward. And well defended by Sergi Dominguez in the end. Malaga again, they've been the side on the front foot since the red card and Barca had about a five minute stretch but for the most part it's only been the road team Benito over the top kept alive out to Calvo. Calvo wants to make a move. Trying to get a little too fancy. Away by Unai. And on the run now, Barca will take off again with Angel Alarcón, who once again gets around a couple. Left his pass a little short, but Barca have support. Munoz dumps it back. Anaya. They got to go quick, Barca. They don't have numbers. It's, it's just time to get forward. Danny tried to do what he could, but not enough in the end. Pollen is dealt with, popped up by Gerard Hernandez. Those who have made their way from the south of Spain have enjoyed the trip and I assume the time as well. Maybe they're headed to the Copa del Rey earlier, although they better be careful because uh, they're not allowing anybody in with blue and white coloring on their shirts. That's more of a Sociedad thing than it is a Malaga thing. I wonder. That, that, would, that would actually be... That would be a good test, I think. Because you can't get in with the opposition gear, but what if you go in with Malaga's shirt? Do they let it happen? Corner comes in. Handled confidently again by Dominguez. Back post bound from Tome. Popped up by Munoz, who can't locate it. Finally does. Well defended again. And a quick release this time for Alarcón. And the flag is up on him. That is, uh, technically speaking, the third time that he's put the ball in the back of the net. None of which have counted.
Substitution uh, was about to come, although it will come afterwards. Luzzi is going to make an appearance, and that might be it for Angela Larcon then. Who, again, we, we didn't get a clear look at that either, but you could see that Oscar Lopez was displeased with the flag coming up on him that time. And now Alarcón is going to make his way off, it appears. And uh, it's actually not going to be on hell. It's going to be Unai Hernández. So Luzzi on. It's only three substitutions that have been made by my count for Barca. I think with 10 men, it's been a fine print type of night. Got to get between the lines to figure this one out. Got 20 minutes to find a goal, or else we're headed to penalties. Here's Calvo. Really wants it on his left foot. Instead, doesn't mind taking it back. Anaya sends it away, and Ander is there for it. Luzzi's first action was him being shoved to the ground without a call. Into the triple digits, minute 101. We don't have too many of these at this level. Alarcón is back defending. And now he's going to get on the run. He's seemingly tireless today. He has not stopped running. And he's doing so around all of the Malaga players. And that's a problem. Alarcón has pulled up with what looks to be a hamstring injury. And after all of that running... What you hope for is that it's a cramp. That's what you're hoping for, but it it's its hard to tell, and we're not going to speculate. We're just going to hope that Angel Alarcón is all right, but it looks like he might be ready to come out. Gerard González is the next man in line for Oscar López. Maybe it is a cramp. Maybe, because he's being given some fluids and he's trotting back out there for now. And that's what happens when you play 100 minutes of football. Calvo tries to keep his run going. That's a tough challenge coming in and a penalty given late. Dani Rodriguez was waiting for the referee to do something. And he had a long, long look at it. A really long look at it. We're talking several seconds. Let's see. I mean, look how long he's waiting. And then he makes the call. Oh, 
Well, some of the words that are flying around near the Barca bench right now are embarrassment. It's understandable to be frustrated with the call based on how long it took. Now, whether or not it's the right call, objectively, we have to say that, that it's very hard to tell from where we sit. I, it's if you're a Barca fan it's not a penalty if you're watching this and you're a fan of Malaga for some reason it's definitely a penalty and if you're in between you probably can't say definitively either way but it's going to be Calvo with a chance to put Malaga in the lead just before the halftime of extra time And he's done it. No doubt about it, ripped right down the middle. And Convo has given Malaga the lead. There was a card that came out as well in that process. I believe it was for Dani. And Barca have it all to do now with 15 minutes left. Moreno will be subbed out. Gerard Gonzalez is coming on. We'll see how much time we have before the end of this first half of extra time because we just had a long wait too along with the penalty. Through the lines, here is Dunny brought down in the box. There's a call for a penalty there too. And based on what just transpired, it wouldn't shock you to think that it could have been given. And Malaga are slide tackling into everything now. Things, if you thought they were aggressive before, We've already seen the red card for Lamine, so Barca are trying to do this down a man. It's going to be extremely physical the rest of this game. Because you know Barca will not take no for an answer. Dominguez all the way down, Calvo's on the chase, and it's given away by Ander, who picks it back up. And that's where the first half of extra time comes to an end. Oh boy.
The frustration comes in all different shapes and sizes, and this challenge from Dani Rodriguez. This is the difference. You can determine for yourself based on what you see, if you think it's a penalty or not. Here is the penalty that has put Malaga in front and the celebration that ensued. These 10 men without Lamine Yamal, who was sent off in the second half, they will have the task. They will have 15 minutes to find a goal. The best that you would think Barca can do right now, barring something extra miraculous, is to find one and get to penalties. But Malaga have been the deterrent tonight. Barca will not be taking this laying down. They will be playing with a fire, a desire, a vengeance in some ways. And Oscar Lopez has laid out his game plan. So here we go. This looks like a play drawn right out of Oscar Lopez's book. And Naya is going to flick it forward. And he's able to get around one man, trying to send it to the middle right away. Barca have a corner, 15 seconds in. Good start. Ball comes in. Dominguez rises for it. He got his head to it. You would think that Andres, the keeper, is going to be yet another player tested in this second period. Now it's worth noting, he's already on a yellow, so if he takes too long, the referee could do something about it. On the turn, Arnau Casas, his ball in. Headed down into Angel's path. Tried to go with the outside of his foot. Barca will take the throw. Dominguez. Munoz. Went to ground with his defender. Back in over the top. Luthi looking for it. Casas playing much further up the pitch, though he loses out on possession here. Well defended by Anaya. I, 
That should, should be offside. Should be offside. That's what they're. That's what the the Barso coaches are yelling about. The ball was headed clear because there was an offside. That's really bad, especially if it leads to something for Malaga. It's already bad to begin with. Angel flicks it forward. Luzzi was waiting. This game is starting to fall apart a little bit. Malaga will start to be content keeping the ball. And keep the ball they have. Dominguez with a nice challenge. It should be a goal kick. No, it's going to be a corner. Hopped in towards the back. Dominguez heads it away, and there's a, it looks like a foul that came in there. Time for Barca to make a push. Settled down by Gerard Gonzalez. Here's Angel again, who cramped up earlier. Gonzalez through, looking for his cross. Low skimming in, it was clipped by Casas. Out for a throw. That's as close as Barca have been. It ricocheted up towards the keeper, Andres, who tried to make himself as big as possible. And Andres has stayed down. There are more cramps. Cramps and tensions. Tani on the turn to the back post and it's skied high. And Barca are beginning to run out of time. Those types of challenges are not going to help because Monaga are going to stay down. The clock continues to run and the ball's not even in play. This game is starting to lose control, to say the least. Uh-oh, I don't know what that is. Are we going for the ball? I sure hope so. That was a, a very angered run from Sergio Dominguez. And he was just trying to make sure that the ball was delivered so the ball could get back in play. That's what Barca need. They, they need the ball to be in play. Uh, 
Dominguez, shoulder to shoulder. He's probably had the best game of anybody in Blaugrana tonight. Maybe him and, and Alarcón. Dani keeps it on his feet, uh, wins the throw. Gets around one. He's had a good game too. Now he's brought down. That'll bring about a foul. Got to make these set pieces count. It's a good position for Gerard Hernandez to put this into the box. Everybody's getting forward. Here comes the service. It comes all the way through. It nearly reached Alarcón. There's still a player down for Barca in the box. Hernández will switch sides. Alarcón is in space, and the flag is up on him. So Marquez will come in for Malaga. This is what happens in these types of games. These elimination games against teams you don't see a lot, but they want to go up against the big bad Barca. Sure, we'll have a few added minutes on at the end, but not many. Big head. Given away by Dani. Tome up ahead. The substitute Marquez with his first involvement. It's not looking too bright for Barça in the Copa. Hernandez dispossessed. Hector forward. Was looking for a cross and now decides that perhaps the corner was a better place to go, although that was the wrong decision. Down a man, Barca trying to come back from a one goal penalty deficit. Alarcón, oh, what is that? What is that? It's got to be a red card, and it is. That was Fran with an unnecessary kick. I mean, that's a full-on... What is that? <laughs> what are we doing? Play the game. So it's 10 men each now, at least for the last five minutes or so. It's one less defender out there 
for Malaga. Here's Hernandez sending it in. Andres is out for it, and he's caught it. And Andres is going to roll around for a while. The assistant referees are running in to, to try and calm tempers. And I, I, he was barely touched. This is the kind of football we don't like. This is the kind of football that needs to be out of the game. And it's a shame that these 19-year-olds resort to these tactics at this point. And I get it. You want to win the game. You want to advance. But th there's, a, there's a line. You have to stop with the antics at some point. You have to play the game with more honor than what's going on. And it doesn't help that the referees are allowing this to happen, too. There are some tired legs out there. Again, we won't know exactly how many extra minutes we'll have. You'd have to think probably two, maybe three if Barca are lucky. Or they could just go get a goal right now. To the middle, corner. Corner for Barca in extra time of stop, in the stoppage time of extra time. It will be Dani Rodriguez to take it from the far side. Dani in, flicked on by Anaya, out by Calvo into the middle and into the hands of Andres. This might be the last effort for Barca to try and stay alive in the Copa. Luzzi keeps it moving. And that's off of Danny, and that's not what we're looking for. Now Danny is going to get into it. He's already on a yellow card. He might see another one and be sent off here. Munoz trying to put it in the only place that'll help Barca forward. And there are bodies coming for Barca. Maybe there's one more chance. Here's Angel Alarcón. He's going to rip. And Andres is on top of it. Oh. 
And be careful when the final whistle blows here too. Be careful when the final whistle blows. Anybody going to take the free kick? And at this point, just blow the whistle already. Or we'll play 130 minutes. That'll be that. Final whistle, Malaga are moving on to the quarterfinals of the Copa del Rey Juvenil. A win at the Ciudad Esportiva for them is a marquee event and they'll go celebrate with their fans. A 1-0 victory on a penalty in extra time from Calvo. And that is the difference. Well, we wish we could have given you better results tonight, but that is sometimes just the way that it goes. And this team will move on. And we will move on. And we'll see you next time. Final score from the Ciudad Esportiva. It's Barça nil. Malaga 1. Good night.